The much maligned NFC East finally came through as the New York Giants and the Washington football team came up with big upsets in week 13. We'll tell you about the NFL Survivor impact as well as get you ready for week 14 in NFL Survivor, plus an important conversation about the state and the future of this channel. All coming up next. Hello, everyone. I'm Eric Lee. And I'm Michael Wiley, and we're the Fantasy Football Consultants. Michael, what a wild thir week 13. Some unpredictably close games and some upsets. But we got to start with your Las Vegas Raiders. How stressful was that game? Well, I, I, I have to admit they did not deserve to win that game. I think everybody who watched the game knows it. Uh, it was a really, really, I mean, kind of good showing by the Jets, but really disappointing uh, showing by the Raiders. I actually think it was a, more of a shocker ending than the Cardinals-Buffalo game the, the prior week because, uh, I mean, the Jets, all they had to do is play prevent defense and all-out blitz. I mean, I think they wanted to lose. That's all I can think of. I want the number one pick, <laughs> but I'll take it. The, the Raiders had no timeouts left in 30 seconds. They had to drive the, the length of the field. The one thing you don't want to do, Michael, is let a receiver get behind you. And they had it happen, but it was incomplete. So they got another chance, and they let it happen again. And, and to steal the red zone guy's comment after the game, and that's how you stay winless. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. uh, so, you know, we have been really critical of this NFC uh, East, but it's finally, you know, as much as it went to the expense of my Seahawks, I didn't appreciate that, but they finally came uh, through with some quality game. I want to give it up to us, Michael. We're wrong plenty of times. Just remember a couple of weeks ago when we both said pick Minnesota over Dallas. But last week we were right on with a couple of these takes. You might say, who could have predicted a Redskin upset or to Denver to play the toughest team in the NFL, the Chiefs really close? Us two, roll the tape. I think Washington looks much better with Alex Smith at uh, QB. You know, if there was a team on this list of the underdogs that I would say would be an upset, my guess, it's the Washington football team. I agree. To me, this is the scariest game. I'm also a little bit afraid of the Denver game, not because, um, you know, Kansas City isn't capable. They're, they're the best team in the league. But, you know, Denver is going to have a quarterback back, I'm pretty sure. Their defense is actually pretty strong. Okay, I said that we had some good takes, Michael. How much did our listeners listen to us? What was the effect on the poll? Is nobody picked uh, either the Steelers or the Seahawks. So we didn't lose anyone to those games. We did lose one of our viewers this week, um, but that was it. So we're down uh, from 13 down to 12. We lost Mario Dill, who, uh, who had picked the Niners, but to his credit, that was uh, because he... Uh, he wasn't able to get his pick for the Raiders in on time. Uh, and so he was kind of left with what he was left with. He ended up having to go with San Francisco. Unfortunately for him, Mario, uh, we, uh, we go with what CBS Sports has on CBS Sports Line. So kind of good reminder to everyone, make sure you get your picks on, on time. All right. So let's, get, let's turn our focus to week 14, another good slate of games. Uh, let's take a look at it. There are eight games that we want to focus on this week. Oh, it's nice to see my Seattle Seahawks at the top of the list. Almost two touchdown favorites at home against another New York team, this time the New York Jets. Uh, then we have a slew of two teams that are seven and a half point favorites, but they're both on the road. Tennessee at Jacksonville and Green Bay at Detroit. New Orleans, a touchdown favorite at Philadelphia. The Tampa Bay Bucks, six and a half point favorites against Minnesota. And then we got three games. If you want to go a little contrarian, San Francisco, four and a half point favorites at home against Washington and Dallas and Carolina, three and a half point favorites, Dallas at Cincinnati, Carolina at home against Denver. Now I know what some of the folks are going to say. You missed a couple of games. 
look, there are a couple of games that are higher spreads that you have no business considering. Kansas mm-hmm. City, seven and a half point favorites at Miami. My, first of all, Miami is an is eight and four. They're an excellent uh, team. And Kansas City has much better games in the future at, at playing Atlanta and the Chargers in week 16 and 17. The Rams, six point favorites at home against New England. Don't pick the Rams. <laughs> Wait one more week when they host the Jets in week 15. Do you agree with me, Michael, that the Rams in Kansas City, people have no business picking them this week? Yeah, both for the future value and even on this Rams game. I mean, New New England all of a sudden uh, is looking a little bit more solid. They had a really nice win against San Diego. I know that there was a little bit of a pile on game, but their defense is looking better. So, yeah, I'd be afraid of that game. Yeah, they they look like they have their eyes toward the playoffs. It looks like they're going to try to make make a run out of it down the stretch. So, look, folks, I'm not going to leave a lot of suspense, Michael, I've got the blue shirt on to uh, give you an idea. I just don't know who I'm going to pick this week. (laughs) Look, folks, I've been telling you about this pick for three weeks. We asked you guys to save the Seahawks because we thought that was going to be by far the best game this week. It is. The Seattle Seahawks are 13 and a half point favorites. Uh, They're at home even though they had a real dud game against uh, the New York team, they're actually very healthy, Michael, uh, in this game. They got all their offensive weapons back. Uh, Their defense is looking much better. Uh, And the Jets are still a bad team. They're the worst team in football. Um, I believe you guaranteed a a, a win over the Jets last week. All right. I'll, I'll match you. I will match you. Write it down. I don't know what I do when I don't. My guarantees don't work out. But I will guarantee a Seattle Seahawks win. If I can't guarantee them to be, win at home against the Jets, I don't know when I can. They're my pick. Put it down, Seahawks. Oh, you're so bold, Eric. <laughs> Although I, uh, I have to admit, uh, I felt really bold last week with my pick over the Jets. And uh, after how your Seahawks played against the Giants this la- last week and how their offense has really been stifled the last few weeks, you got to be a little bit nervous, but this one's in Seattle. Seattle's not going to duplicate what happened last uh, this last week. Uh, and the Jets Fairness, come- it was- So you're, you're pretty safe, and I'm, I'm going to go ahead and go with you. Oh, oh, you're with me on this. Okay, very good. Now, we are going Seattle. They're clearly the pick. Again, this has been in the works and in the planning for several weeks. You know who didn't listen to us because they weren't paying attention to the channel and they should? 15.5% of folks picked the, the Seattle Seahawks last week when they should have been waiting for this week. All right. Well, let's take a peek. Uh, uh, let's break it up into two quadrants, right? Let's talk about the more high point spreads. And then we'll talk about if you want to go contrarian. Um, Because that's the other option. If you're in a pool and you believe everyone else in the pool, as well, you have 13, 14 people left, are going to go Seattle. Does it make sense? We'll debate it. Does it make sense to try to go elsewhere? The problem with that is Seattle doesn't have much future value. If you really held Seattle this long, I think you should pick them. But Uh, Let's take a look at the other games. Uh, Let's talk about the Tennessee at Jacksonville. That's the team that is the weakest, right? At least on paper. Jacksonville, you know, they've lost now 11 straight and counting. Both of these teams have terrible defenses. Uh, Tennessee is allowed 27 points a game. Uh, Jacksonville allowed 29. When these two teams faced earlier this year in week two, when Jacksonville was undefeated, (laughs) um, the Titans won 33 to 30. So, and admittedly, Jacksonville is playing better ball. I don't feel near as good as this game as the Seattle game, uh, Michael. How about you? Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, uh, under Mike Glennon, Mike Glennon, I said that name a couple of times. Jacksonville has, you know, uh, they looked pretty solid this last week. Other, than, uh, You know, he had a, a rough interception to end the game, and who knows whether Minnesota, Minnesota really deserves much credit. Um, but uh, Jacksonville is going to have a tough time going for that number one pick. They might as well go for the win here. Uh, and who better to beat than their rivals, the Tennessee Titans. So uh, I'm a little bit nervous on this one because of what you said, the Tennessee defense. Yeah. And they're back at home in Jacksonville. 
Four of the last five games Jacksonville has played, they've lost by four points or less. So they actually are playing better ball. They are competitive. Uh, let's table that. There's no reason to save Tennessee, though. So, I mean, if, if for some reason you didn't have Seattle left, which you probably wouldn't be in that situation because the only time people have been picking him was last week, then, you know, this, you know, Tennessee is one of the few teams with no future value left on this side of the ledger. Yeah. Um, Green Bay, seven and a half point favorites at Detroit. Um, Michael, I think we're finding how important DeAndre Swift and Kenny Galladay is to that Detroit uh, offense. I'm not sure if those guys are going to play. If they are out again, I feel really good about this Green Bay game, given how strong that offense has looked in the uh, really all season under Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, and their defense is coming together as well. Most people have picked Green Bay. They do have a little bit of future value with the Carolina game next week. But um, I think the one caveat I'll give you is Detroit's offense has been looking better, and they just had the coaching change, uh, which, you know, probably doesn't necessarily help them, but it's just another uh, wild card variable to take into account. They're at home. Uh, they, you know, would love to beat Green Bay. Um, you know, I, I think you know, if we knew Galladay and Swift weren't playing, then yeah, I think I probably would agree with you. But uh, still, I feel much better about the Seahawks game. Yeah, but looking as a secondary choice, uh, whether I put Green Bay or Tennessee next for me, all depends about Swift and Galladay. If those two guys are back, I'm staying away from this game. If those got, if one or both of those are out, I'm starting to feel good about Green Bay. Uh, here's another option, you know, New Orleans, seven point favorites at Philadelphia. Well, we have to deal with the fact that we still have, uh, Drew Brees sitting on the sideline, but you know, my man is uh, three and oh at the quarterback spot, Taysom Hill. Uh, and even though he has been a little bit shaky, uh, I think the tougher games were the Atlanta games, this Philadelphia team, despite a little comeback under uh, Jalen Hurst, who we'll see just looks really bad right now. So I, I feel pretty safe about new Orleans. Um, they really don't have too much future value left with Kansas city and Carolina on their, their, um, slate they do have minnesota as well but drew Brees will be back for that most people don't know have new orleans at, at this point um but uh they should win this game but gosh who, who knows maybe philadelphia is going to put it together finally one of these weeks yeah um so we'll have to look there is a chance i, I looked at the the late breaking news that drew Brees could come back for this game um, so we'll see. I think that's a factor. I know you like your Taysom Hill from your alma mater, um, but he's no Drew Brees. I do think that they have a much better chance uh, under him. Speaking of quarterbacks, who's going to be the quarterback of Philadelphia? And I am sorry to say it. I think, it, in fact, it, it hurts to say it, Michael. <laughs> It, it, should, it shouldn't be Carson Wentz. It should be Jason Hurts. Yeah, no, no question. Uh, the, the energy on the team just looked at a little bit better when he was in there. And everybody has uh, learned that after Carson Wentz injury or second injury a couple years ago, he is afraid of the blitz. That's all you have to do is put pressure on him. And Jalen Hurts potentially changes that up which is really what needs to happen right now. Philadelphia is going to have a chance to come back, and I don't really think they do. They have to basically win out, and Jalen Hurts gives them the best chance. Let's not forget, New Orleans is 10-2, and <laughs> and they got a good defense. If Drew Brees is back, they're my – if after Seattle, they would rise to the top of this list for me, assuming you still had the Saints. But what about Tampa Bay? Six and a half point favorites at home against Minnesota. How good is this Minnesota team? It's unclear. <laughs> they, they, uh, you know, they, they, the problem is Minnesota doesn't have a good defense. That we know. Yes, they have key offensive uh, weapons. You know who has a good defense? Tampa Bay, especially on the ground. They very well could bottle up uh, uh, Dalvin Cook as much as you can bottle up D D Dalvin Cook and force Kirk Cousins to beat you 
he does have two great weapons in Jefferson and Thielen. How scared are you if you're picking Tampa Bay that Cousins can beat you in the air? Well, and it goes to the other side as well, right? I mean, Tampa Bay's offense has been a little bit hit or miss. And so they're coming off the bye. But I think the big issue in Tampa Bay is the connection between Bruce Arians and Tom Brady. It just does not seem to be there. Uh, you know, you would think the bye would help, but sometimes it hurts in situations like that. Uh, and so with Minnesota being a wild card who can beat anybody and lose to anybody, I would be a, kind of hesitant to pick this game, even though Tampa Bay is coming off the bye. So, yeah, I agree with you. Of these four games, I think I feel best about New Orleans, uh, even if it's Taysom Hill at the helm. All right, and I will, I will deviate from that. If it is Taysom Hill, <laughs> uh, and you can give, tell me that some of those Detroit key Detroit guys are out, it's going to be Green Bay. If it's Taysom Hill and those Detroit guys are playing, I'll go back to, to Tennessee, but I'm not thrilled about it. Um, I'm so much happier that we've got Seattle. So what's the big contrarian play? Is there a contrarian play this week, Michael? First, let's decide if you were going to do it, which of those three games will you go? And then we'll say whether you think that's just a silly move or not. So would you go San Francisco, Dallas, or Carolina? It's interesting. We got two quarterbacks returning back to their old stomping grounds. We've got Alex Smith going back and playing the San Francisco 49ers. And you got Andy Dalton returning to Cincinnati to pay his old Bengals team. They're going to be on short rest, right? So I don't feel good about uh, that, even though Cincinnati looks pretty bad with the uh, you know, the changes that are happening there, especially, um, I think Mixon's out again. Uh, so you are very kind, Michael, in calling that Cincinnati looks bad. Cincinnati <laughs> looks horrible. In fact, you know what, if you want to literally define MVP, like I do, which is how good is your team with you with how good is the team without you? Joe Burrow de 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 deserves to be in the conversation of the top, at least five or six MVPs this year. He won't be. But my point is, it shows how valuable he is. Even without Mixon, this team moved the ball. Without him, they're awful. I watch Red Zone, right? In, in DFS, I had Miami as my defense. I wanted to see that Miami defense. I never got to see him. I never got to, they never showed the Cincinnati offense. Why? They showed one highlight where they got a 70 yard TD. They, they, the Bengals, offense never got into the red zone so um i know they're playing dallas's defense which is really bad so what what's gonna what's gonna be worse the cincinnati offense or the dallas defense uh i think it's the cincinnati offense uh of these games if i, I want i want no part of that san francisco game when you yeah, ask, that's the only this is the only game the dallas cincinnati game is the only one i can even think is worth talking about i mean San Francisco is not at home, right? Remember, California is shut down right now. That game's going to be, I think, in Arizona, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, it's not a home game. And Washington just beat the Steelers uh, on the same day that the Niners played. So the short rest is not an issue. And really, Carolina's a favorite over Denver after what we just saw. Denver's defense, you know, kind of due to Kansas City. I don't agree with the spreads on either one of those games. Yeah, well, I'm going to agree with you and slightly disagree with you. I'm going to absolutely agree with you. When when I look at San Francisco and Washington and say, do I want to pick this game for Survivor? The question is, do I want to pick this game for Survivor with the Washington pick, not with San Francisco? Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, this should be a pick em at best, if not Washington slightly favored. So no way do I suggest anyone picking that game? Carolina, Denver, here's my slight thing. There's a chance that Christian McCaffrey comes back for this game, but I'm with you. The game that I would pick between the three would be uh, the Dallas Cowboys. And it's more of a reflection of how badly I think Cincinnati is than any big uh, uh, comment about the Cowboys. How about you, Cowboys? If you have Seattle, can you at all endorse a cowboy pick. No. <laughs> Actually, Eric just guaranteed it, right? So doesn't that mean we're all we're all in good shape? Take let's take a look at our experts panel. And Michael, 
something else that will make our viewers uh, feel good. The crowd, who hasn't missed a pick all year long, is going with the Seattle Seahawks, just like you're going with the Seattle Seahawks and I'm going with the Seattle Seahawks. But Las Vegas stupidly picked the Seattle Seahawks already. <laughs> so uh, they are forced to go to the next, their next pick and the highest spread of the next pick is the New Orleans Saints. So that will do it for week 14. So Eric, if we can, let's take a couple minutes, if you don't mind answering a few questions, to talk a little bit about this channel, the current state of things, uh, the future of it. Um, I guess I'd like to start by asking you, um, you know, how do you determine the content and structure uh, of this show? So Michael, you know that I'm a huge fantasy football just fan. We've talked about it together for so many years. Um, so. I was a consumer of content on YouTube of fantasy football, uh, trying to find a survivor show uh, and as well as daily fantasy football. And so I wanted to put a show together that I would want to listen to. I didn't want a real long show, I, I, but I wanted a show that was engaging and that it was fun to listen to uh, where people really talked about things I wanted to, to, to know about. And that's what we try strive to do here on FFC. But you know what? The show has evolved. If you go look back at our earlier shows, and it's because of listening to feedback from our audience. I mean, our audience was the ones that said on our daily fantasy football shows, hey, why don't you uh, talk about the main slate? You guys are just talking about the general slate. So we changed things. So it's constantly evolving. We constantly want to get your guys' feedback on what you like, are any suggestions for what we can do in the future? So now I've been doing this for a year and other than the guest appearances in the past. Um, it's been great guys, to have you, Michael. Thank you. But this is year three for you. Um, so would you say you're happy with the growth in the current state of the channel? Um, you know, Michael, I'm, uh, I like hiking, you know, and that's the analogy I'm gonna use. When you hike on switchbacks up a really big mountain, you constantly are looking up and you're constantly, you're working really hard. You're looking up and going, I want to get there. I want to get there. I want to get there. What I, what you need to do is you need to stop and look back and see all of what you've accomplished and how far you've come. And you need to stop and admire the view. And I am ecstatic about where this channel is. If you were to ask me, um, it's, it was three seasons, but remember we don't film for six months of the year. And that everyone who tells you on YouTube says you can't do that. You'll lose all your audience. You know, you can't do that. But we want to do the fantasy football because that's what we have a passion on. People have asked us, why don't you do the NBA? Why don't you do uh, um, Major League Baseball? It's because we don't have a passion for that. We want to do what we're passionate about. So even with taking these breaks, the fact that we get regularly 2,000 and 3,000 uh, views, the fact that we're up to 7,500 uh, subscribers, that these are people I never met, don't know, and they, they want to tune in week after week to our content is so great. Because one of the things, Michael, about uh, all, uh, the DFS and the Survivor uh, YouTube channels, our, every, people want to watch our content but only for about three or four days. And then the information gets stale and no one cares about a video that we did a couple of weeks ago. So we constantly have to put out new quality content, um, but I'm really happy about where we are, but I'm also happy about the future because there's a lot of neat things that I think that we can do and I'm really excited about it. So. Yeah, no, I, by all accounts that I that I know, I think this is a pretty strong, loyal following. Uh, what would you say to your viewers for what they can do to best support the channel? So everything we offer to you guys is free. So what can you do to, if you like this channel, to support this channel? It is simple. It's something that which, which we say a lot, but not every time because I find it annoying. If you can get in the habit of every fantasy football consultants video you see is the click the like button. There's a lot of other content out there and YouTube's algorithm to get us on more eyes really can, will, would help. And also the subscriber count, um, that's big. 
Michael, I look at our YouTube analytics and over half of our audience who watches our view, our, our shows are not subscribed. Um, so I get it. I get it that it's not some people that's not what they do. But if you like this channel, please, the way that you can support it is the click the subscriber button. And then finally, interact with us. So speaking of interaction, uh, not all the interaction that we have is glowingly positive. How do you how do you deal with the haters? Well, it depends on what you mean by haters, right? Um, people who disagree with us, I actually love as long as they do it in a constructive way. People who say, hey guys, I wouldn't make that survivor pick. I would make this pick. I love that because ultimately what I wanna do and why I care about the subscriber count and growing is because I think in engagement, I think we can have a better product because it won't be just about you and me telling them about our survivor picks. It's gonna be about our community participating in the comment section and calling us out and say, you know what? I don't think that's a good pick and here's why. So as a viewer, not only you get to listen to us, but you can go down to the comment section and uh, read the different comments. But people who are just there to be annoying or <laughs> uh, to, to, to talk about it after the fact and say, you guys suck. Gary, the other co-founder used to tell me, oh, my, my comment that I'll never forget is, I like your guys' show. I just don't like you. <laughs> that is, that's not nice. Um, but and to be honest, I mind more if people are rude to each other in the comment section. And I, I don't want that. That's not a place for, for this channel. We can all be kind to each other in the comments, but express alternative uh, views. And thankfully, I haven't ever, I've only very, very rarely, I can count on one hand, that I've ever had to use the ban button. But I will if people are rude uh, to each other, and I don't want that. But I love contrary, contrarian opinions. Please keep them going. So, right before we end here, Eric, quickly, can you tell us a couple of insights uh, into your uh, designs for the future of the show? Yeah, it all revolves around engagement. So, the one thing that I'm super excited about is that very in the very near future is we're going to do some really neat things relation to Subscriber Appreciation Week at the end of the season to really show our legitimate appreciation. I can't tell you what a good feeling it is to have people leave comments and say, I love your show. I look forward to it each week. Makes all the work worth it. And in a way to give back to you guys, we're going to do some things that we don't normally do. Some of the things are a surprise, so I don't want to give them away. Oh, come but, on. You keep leaving us on our, you know. All right. All right. I, I want to try. I want to try to go live. We talked about this. So an opportunity for you guys to engage with us live. So we're going to try that in Survivor, uh, in a Subscriber Appreciation Week. We're going to have free contests. Um, we're going to do more things. They're going to leave some things in suspense, Michael. You're a good reporter. You're trying to uh, get it out for me. But beyond this, beyond this, what I would like everybody to do right now in this YouTube video, please leave comments about not only any questions you have, because we'll answer them during Survivor, during Subscriber Appreciation Week, and maybe even in, in weeks before. Any questions you want, it could be about anything of our personal life, how Michael and I met, where we where we get our passion from uh, to do this channel, or any questions about the NFL. Uh, who you think, who we think is going to be the dark horse to win the NFL, the Super Bowl this year, whatever questions you might want to ask. And we'll take the best ones and we'll answer them on the air and we'll give you a shout out for asking the questions. But beyond, beyond that, give us suggestions. I talk about the limited utility. There's an ability to do what's called evergreen content, Michael, where we get to talk about things that have a useful life more than three or four days. If you have anything you want that's evergreen content, let us know. We did an NFL Survivor Strategy Show uh, at the beginning of this year. Unfortunately, I'm shocked that it hasn't gotten more views. Um, I'll put a link to it right now. Check it out if you still are playing NFL Survivor. But one of the things I want to look toward next year, the problem we have is Survivor, especially this year, Michael, some reason someone got the crazy idea over half of our audience to pick the Indianapolis Colts in week one. I don't know where they got that. And they got eliminated. And then the, the pool was over for them. 
And then people who play uh, outside pools, you know, it's over for them. And some of them might not be as interested in watching our content. So next year, even though I want to continue to do a survivor pool, that's our brand. We're the most popular NFL survivor pool channel on YouTube. Even though we do that, um, I want to do something that will engage our audience throughout the year, right? So we're looking at possible pick them contests. We're looking at possible confidence pools. So if it's something that you're interested in or give your take, let us know whether you think that's a good idea or how you would like to see it work. Well, Michael, I just want to thank you. Um, Gary Kurtzman is such an important person in the history of this uh, channel and helping found it, but it feels like it hasn't missed a beat with you uh, taking over NFL Survivor. So uh, really appreciate uh, you being involved. And we will have, go through contract negotiations next year. I'm worried what you might ask for uh, since you've been so good. You were on a rookie contract in the first year. So <laughs> anyways, everybody, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this interview portion where we got a bit of insights. Again, whatever you want, uh, enter it into the YouTube comments and uh, we'll look at it and consider it incorporated in a future show. Please, if you haven't yet, like this video and uh, hit that red subscriber button. And remember to tell us your pick and why and to continue to interact with us. Stay safe, take care, and we'll see you next time. See you guys.